Hello everyone and welcome to Judy's Creations in Crochet. And today is August the 8th, 2024. And I want to welcome all of you. Um, I really appreciate every single one of you. And I just want to mention that um, I've been looking at the statistics. YouTube has... Um, what they call analytics that they send to us regularly and we can look at how our channel is doing and you can probably see that right now I'm just over 1450 subscribers and although numbers aren't my driving reason for being here um, it would be really nice to hit 1500 by September. Why September? Well, many of you know that September is a big month for me. Not only is it my birthday, but it's also the potiversary of this channel. That means it's the anniversary of when I started this channel. And um, I do it up big. I try to celebrate the whole month and more about that when September gets here, which isn't too far off now. But I would, it would be really nice to make 1500 for then. And then we could celebrate that with a very nice present to a viewer. And I find it very interesting that um, in the analytics, that's where I started, in the analytics showing who watches my various um, videos, it says that about just over 63% of the people that watch me are returning viewers, people that come back week after week. <clears throat> but just over 36 of the people that view my videos are brand new people, people that are not current, subscribers. So I don't know if this is the first time they've seen me. By chance, 36% of the people watching the video have never seen me before. Or if they are people that do watch regularly, but have never subscribed. And I also looked at every video. And generally speaking, I get anywhere between 300 and 400 viewers on each video. Sometimes it gets higher. Uh, sometimes it doesn't quite reach 300. But generally speaking, on an average week, it's over 300. And I'm thinking, okay, I have over 300 people watching me every week. And over a third of those people are not subscribed to me. So, for those of you that are watching that are not subscribed, if you would just hit that subscribe button, a third of the people is a hundred people each week aren't subscribed, but they watch me. So if you're enjoying these podcasts, then I'd really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button. And that would definitely get me up over my 1500, which is a goal that I'm trying to achieve right now. I keep setting new goals, of course, but it would be nice if we could hit 1500 by September. And it shouldn't be hard if some of you would just hit that subscribe button. Then you'll always be notified of my videos and you will also be eligible for any gifts that I like to send out to viewers. So, um, for those that are new, maybe only here for the first time or only here a couple of times and don't know, I'm coming to you from Chatham, Ontario, which is in the very southwest uh, point of Ontario, which dips down and is the southernmost tip of Ontario. I'm about an hour from the tip of Ontario. 
And I like to talk about crochet, of course, as my channel suggests, but uh, I like to show finished objects. That's how I got started. I had a big stockpile of finished items and I still like to show finished items or things that I'm working on. And the other thing I like to talk about a lot is yarn. And the yarn that I most like to discuss is hand dyed yarn. I fell in love with hand dyed yarn a few years ago and I particularly fell in love with Expression Fiber Arts yarn. And I have quite a collection of that, as well as other hand-dyed yarns, and more particularly, hand-dyed yarns from Canadian indie dyers. And if you'd like to hear more about yarn, then you'll wanna come back each week. And I do a monthly mal, that is, um, I think, quite well received. People really enjoy participating and they really enjoy seeing the monthly slideshow. And if you've not ever seen one and you would check back to last week, you will see the slideshow for July Mal. I always do it on the first of the next month. And in that in that slideshow and in that video, you will see the inspiration bird for the next month. So um, if you're interested in participating, we would love to have you join us. And like I said, if you look at my video from August the 1st, you'll see not only a sample of what people send in to me, but you'll see the inspiration bird for the month of August which I'll probably talk about briefly a little later in this episode. And while we're talking about the monthly mail, um, very soon I will be picking out what will be the inspiration for next year. I don't need to ask. I did ask last year, but I know that there are many, many of you that really enjoy participating in the monthly mail. You love the inspirations. You say it gives you the incentive to pick a project and pick some colors and make something that month. So they'll definitely... Um, this will definitely continue on into next year, but of course I have to pick something different. Last year we did the monthly flowers, this year we're doing tropical birds, and I think I have made my choice for next year, but I haven't 100% decided. I have to do a little more research, and uh, of course I won't be telling you to till the new year, but I have to pick all the inspiration pictures and gather up the yarn for the projects for myself. So just to let you know, that is on my mind these days. So where I always start is, what am I wearing? And by the way, before I start that, um, I want to mention a lot of you commented on my furry co-host last week and I intended to have him up here um, for a little bit of the uh, video today but my co-host is taking a time out and he's down there on the floor because he always follows me into this room he's down there on the floor having a nap a cat nap we'll say and you just may hear him occasionally snoring because every now and then we get some sound effects from him. So anyway, moving on. What am I wearing? Uh, I've worn this a few times. It often sits on the back of my chair. And this is a shawl, although I wear it more like a shawlette or a scarf. It is a one skein project by Carmen Heffernan. I did do a focus on her. Uh, I think last fall, and this is called um, Green Olive, and that's because she made it in green. Um, she is on Ravelry. I will link this pattern on Ravelry, but she also has a blog called Annie Design Crochet, and I will try to link to that as well. 
Um, this is made with, I'm trying to remember, I think it's ephemeral fingering from EFA. Very soft and silky. So that's what I'm wearing. It was a very, very easy pattern, and I've done a number of her patterns in the past. Be sure to check her out. She has a lot of nice patterns, a big variety of things, and you know how we all have those one skein, single skeins that we buy because we fall in love with them, and then we don't know what to do with them. Well, she is one of the two designers that I always recommend for one skein projects because she has quite a number of them and they are some of them are free on her blog so that's what i'm wearing now we want to talk about finished objects this week and i did finish an object this week mind you it took me several weeks to do it it is called girls night out and it is a pattern that I was testing for Marianna Mueller. Now, again, if you check back, oh, in the spring, late spring, I did a focus on that designer. She is from South Africa. And here is the finished item. Now, I'm going to put, uh, I think what I might do is share the screen or put them in the corner. I'm going to show a few more pictures of this item um, as I'm talking. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this. Now, as I said, it is a tester, so it has not been released yet. And the deadline for getting our finished items done was, or is, August the 25th. And I've noticed in the past that she is pretty good about releasing the pattern within the next month, within the next week or so. So you will probably be able to find this on Ravelry by the end of the month. So again, it is called Girls' Night Out, and I can't link it at this point, so you might want to make note of it if you are interested. Now, a couple of things about it. it. You need three colors. You need a skein of each color, although the color C, in my case, purple is A, and the dark teal is B, and then the light aqua, I guess, is C. And B and C have to have contrast for this section. I wish I'd pick something with, I, I picked the same color tones, but light and dark, thinking it would look good, but you almost lose the contrast. So I would pick two totally different colors that contrast each other. And with C, you don't use even a half of the skein. So you could make do with a 50 gram, gram skein or something you have left over. I think I used um, 30, some, about a third of the skein for C. But the other two used more than three quarters of the skein, the teal and the purple. Now, um. I only want to make a couple of comments about the pattern. First of all, there is a basket weave section. I mentioned that, I think, last week, maybe the week before. A basket weave is made with posts. Just so you know, you're doing a section totally posts. Posts are not my favorite thing. He just woke up. Posts are not my favorite thing. And I'm going to talk about this yarn in a minute. And this yarn um, was a poor choice for this pattern because of the posts. The other thing I want to say about the pattern is, just as well as knowing about posts, this is a moss stitch in here. In the last section, she has a number of 
unusual stitches or combination of stitches that I found, I want to say a little bit weird. Um, the one thing that I found weird was working into the back loop of the previous row and the previous row was slip stitches. So you're working into the back loop of slip stitches. To me, that was kind of unusual. But anyway, that's the pattern and you've seen pictures flashing there where I have it, the full thing on the wall and I have it on my mannequin draped. Now, I think my problem with this pattern, because I did make a few mistakes and my pattern was, my problem was the yarn. So I wanna talk about this yarn for a little bit. First of all, here are the three colors again that I used. I used the most of the purple, or almost the same amount of this teal. And as you can see, I have a lot left over of this light, I guess I'm gonna call it aqua. And the yarn I used is called, it's from EFA and it's called Sing Signature, oh, that says them all. I guess the one, this last one was a mall. Okay. The other two are definitely signature. Oh, that's a mall also. Huh. Okay. We're going to talk about a mall and signature. I want to talk about the difference between the two. So, I'm going to start by talking about a mall. I have two skeins here of a mall fingering. A mall fingering is 60% baby alpaca, 20% linen, and 20% mulberry silk. There are 400 meters or 438 yards in this 100 grams. I believe I used a 3.5 millimeter hook. And I think you can see it best in this skein, although it is noticeable in this skein as well. Linen is known for not taking the dye. So when you put linen in, you see the white that runs through it. I don't know if you can tell in this one. The white that runs through the color, that is the linen, okay? Um, linen is also, in my mind, a little bit stiffer, although they've mixed it with mulberry silk, which helps. Baby alpaca is very soft, so this doesn't, this doesn't feel too bad, but it, it could have felt better if it didn't have the linen in it. Now, I had bought a mall uh, a fair bit. I have, oh, you can't see, it's one too low, but I have a cubby right here that's half full with a mall, and I intend to use it, but I need to tell you something about a mall. A mall, first of all, has alpaca, so we've got sort of a halo to it. Second of all, it has linen, so you have these things coming out of it. Well, alpaca does that too. It has threads that come out, but they are white, so I know it's the linen. And it tends to be splitty. So if you have a problem with splitty yarn, you will have a problem with this. Now, Splitty doesn't bother me too, too much when I'm working on something very straightforward, like the moss stitch or just straight double crochets. But when you're working in posts, especially for me anyway, back post double crochets, 
I am always pulling through the wrong thing or half of the half of the strand of yarn or I'm getting between strands uh, in the post. I, there's something about back post double crochets that frustrate me. And when you have a splitty yarn, it meant that I was making a lot of my stitches or having to try to make my stitches two and sometimes three times. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not good at back posts. Maybe there's a better technique for attacking the back post or handling the back post. But uh, I would not do anything with back posts with this yarn again. Now, I want to tell you the difference between um, a mall and signature. First of all, you will notice the labels, all the labels from EFA are this color. And that's because that's Shandy's favorite color. If you watch her, she does a, a YouTube and a, not YouTube. Uh, yes, she has a YouTube channel where she shows new patterns. But she does a Facebook and an Instagram video every Tuesday at noon. And she is usually in her craft room or whatever room it is. Walls are painted this color or very similar to it. So that's where the base signature fingering came from. They say linen does not take the dye. Somehow they've done some kind of process to dye, maybe they dyed the linen by itself in a way that it took this color and then they put that color of linen in every one of the colors that they made for signature fingering. Do you see? You see, Really, there's a big clump of it right there. So that's the signature fingering. And of course, it's all coming off all over the place, along with the shedding of alpaca. So this one is signature fingering. I have another um, here. Here's a signature fingering as well. And again, it's the dark teal with her color of teal running through it. But this one is the prettiest and most noticeable. I really, really like this color, and I do have another skein of it. But I think I'll make a one skein project, something like this. And I'll be able to make it a little bigger because I have this much left over. Um, so that... If I'm rating it, it's it has silk in it, so it's not bad feeling, especially given there is linen in it also. Um, but it isn't as soft as some of their yarns. It is splitty, and while you're working, all of these hairs are coming off in your work. And I had a little pile of them <laughs> on the table beside me. So I would not rate this one as high as, see, there it is coming out and then I would set it aside because it would bother me to be working with it. Um, you know, most of their yarns I have rated at uh, like nine out of 10 or four and a half out of five. I'm not sure how I was rating them in the past. This one definitely be more like a, a three and a half between a three and a half and a four because it, it is it is nice and it feels nice. But splitty is a problem in my book and it limits the stitches you're going to do with this particular yarn. So that is my finished object. And I have a work in progress. You are not going to get to see the whole of it. I'm just going to flash it up here and you can see why it's being done in the monthly colors. And I just wanted to say, I will finish it tonight, I think. It was a very, very easy pattern, which gave me a break after that last one because that one was 
frustrating to me. But I originally showed you last week that I had picked out my colors and this was the pink I had picked out. And then when I went to make it, I realized the other two were fingering and this was sport weight. And it was definitely heavier than the other two. And I didn't really want to put it in the shawl being heavier. I will at some point make things with different weights but I just wasn't, I wasn't really prepared to put a sport weight in with these other two, especially since the one felt kind of thin. So I changed it up for Moon Gleam Fingering, which is a thinner and it's definitely fingering weight. And you can see the color is darker. This color wasn't a perfect match to the picture either. And I will try to flash up a picture over here. This wasn't a perfect match. This definitely isn't a perfect match, but it's the three colors. It's what I'm going with. Enough said. It's still pretty close to the inspiration picture. So that's what I'm working on, but I will be finished probably by the end of today. Um, I can't see why I wouldn't unless... Something happens that gets me busy at something else, which I don't know what that would be. So let me just get a little sip. All right. So that, by the way, is called the Happy Shawl. Uh, I will link it to the Ravelry um, page. <clears throat> now, the next thing we need to talk about is the summer cow. Now, I have made these six blocks and I took the smallest one and I blocked it on my blocking board. It actually filled the blocking board which is nine inch square. I really wanted them to be eight inch squares, but you know what happens when you block things. Now the others are um, awful close to that size. And I've decided, because if you try to block them, when you get them wet, they expand quite a bit. And I don't want these to expand any more than they are. And I think that I can make them all sort of fit with this one. So there they are, all six. I did show them in each video. There are the six squares I've made. Now, while I'm talking, again, I'm going to move over. Rather than split the screen, I'm going to put them in the corner. I'm going to show you again a few, not all the ones I showed you before, but I'm going to show you a few, three, four, five ideas of things you can make with multiple stitches. They didn't use these stitches, um, but they were made with uh, either squares or sections of different stitches. And my original intent when I started was to make enough squares to put them together and make a front panel and a back panel, stitch them together, and then just do some sleeves in a, in a pullover or sweater in a straight double crochet. Well, that would have required nine of these squares because it takes about three. Actually, I made them so big that it would take two and a half. Well, how would I make this? When I measured and worked it out, eight inches, 24 across was perfect. 24 down was perfect. Of course, they're not eight inches, but even before they got too big, I realized I couldn't do it because these squares took so much yarn and I have, I don't know if I have the yarn in here. Yes, I do. Hang on. Here's the yarn I'm using. 
It's Twisted Tweed Sport. This is called Nougat. And I had four skeins of this. Or I thought I had four, but I only see two here. And I know I used one and a bit of this skein. Did I only have three? I was able to get um, four squares and a little bit left over from each skein. I'm sure I had four, so there must be another one somewhere. Anyhow, even with four, getting four from each would only give me 16 with a little bit left over. Well, if I'm doing a panel of three by three, I need nine, 18 plus more to do the sleeves. I wasn't going to have enough. So then I thought, well, what am I going to do next? Um, I still like the idea of a sweater. So my thinking was I would put three across. Now I realize three across is going to be too big, but my alternate was put three across, three different stitches, and put them at the bottom and then sew them together and then work up from this top edge to make the square I need for a front and a back. That way I would need three on the front, three on the back, the six I have. Hopefully the other two and a half skeins would be able to make in double crochet the rest of the body and whatever sleeve I have enough yarn for. Well, now I realize that that's probably going to be too big because these are all eight and a half or nine. I don't, it doesn't matter that they're not the same width. I do need to make them work height wise, but I think that I can. So what is my next plan of attack? Well, then I got thinking, well, what if I put th three down if it's a little more than 24, that's okay. It'll be a longer sweater. My thinking is, how about I put three down on one side and then finish off the side. I could make it separate and seam it up here. And I could put three down on the front, three down on the back, and the rest be solid. Would that look silly? I don't know. Otherwise, I have to decide to do something else. This is not enough to make a scarf. I would have to make more squares in all of these stitches to make a scarf. Do you think I'm smarter to just make more squares and make a nice long scarf? This definitely would be cozy with all of these different stitches. That might be the very easiest thing for me to do. I'd love to hear your opinion. Do you think having three of these different stitches down, and there are two of them that are quite open. The, um, hmm, can't even remember the name of that. The triad, the triad and the uh, double cross stitch are a little bit open. I would put them at the bottom. The others are are fairly solid, so you can't see through them. This one, this one feels so much lighter, like I've used a lighter weight of yarn than all the others. So should I make this unusual weird sweater and hope I have enough yarn? Or should I just make more squares and put it all together in a scarf. It would make a good scarf, male or female, very neutral. So that's a possibility. Or do you have some other idea for me? Please make a comment below. Tell me your opinion, what I should do. I've been using a 4.0 dots hook and uh, the verdict is out <laughs> on what I'm going to do, but 
I have another project I'm going to start when I finish um, when I finish the monthly mal project tonight. Tomorrow I, I am working on, that's the next thing I was going to talk about. I am working on a poncho for a friend. And I did not bring the poncho. I started it, but I am not happy with the work. Uh, I want to try another stitch. And I will talk more about it when it is a finished object. But I am using this yarn and making a poncho, which should be done, I think, by next week. So once this is finished next week, I need to get busy on our summer cow with that yarn, with those squares I just showed you. So I have to make a decision in about a week or 10 days to get busy on that. So those are the things that I am, you might say, currently working on. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is a few future plans, a future projects. I thought it might be interesting to show you a few things that I have planned, I have in mind to make. Um, I don't know what I'm making for September yet. I will decide that when uh, September gets here. But I have some other things I do want to work on over the next couple of months, although I might have to put some of it on the back burner because I have to work on items for my fall craft show. Um, one thing for sure that I'll be working on in September, I think it starts September the 1st, and it goes for eight weeks. Some of you who follow... Uh, Shandy on EFA will be aware that they put out a very special collection, a box, um, and I sort of teetered on whether to get the box or not. In the end, I did. I wish I hadn't. I wish I had just bought the yarn because they are doing a crochet along and a knit along. Um, they both look very much the same. I'm going to put a picture here of the crochet along shawl called the Nua Nua. It is absolutely beautiful. I love the rainbow of colors. The yarn, of course, I had to order, so it hasn't arrived yet. I hope it arrives in time for the beginning of September. And you open the box and there is a gift in there every week. So once a week you open this um, special item. Uh, it has it has nothing to do with yarn. You know what yarn you're getting and you get the pattern free. It all comes together as a bundle and I will start that in early September. So that's September plus of course my September mal. But until then, because I think I will have the poncho done in another week, I have to do my summer cow, but I have a few other, and they almost are almost all EFA patterns. The last choice isn't. One is called the Luna Shawl, and I'm putting a picture up of these to show you what it is I want to work on. I um, I avoid printing out anything if I can. First of all, to save paper and trees and to save ink. And I don't need papers all over the house. So I, well, I follow the pattern right here on my iPad. Sometimes if it has a chart, an EFA is very rarely do they have a chart. If they have a chart, I will print it out because it's easier to have that chart, move it around and get it up close. Now the Loon, I think it's called Loon, L-U-N-E, shawl is done with twisted tweed. And I am going to be using uh, maybe one color short, but I'm definitely going to use this blue and this purple and this gray. But I believe it needs a fourth color and um, 
I have a twisted tweed. I'm either going to go with another shade of blue or I'm going to go with the shade of aqua that I have. So that is one that I want to do. Um, it may be the fall before I get to it because I have several here that I'm trying to decide between. Um, now where did I put that bag? Nope. Okay, I have another one. Oh, over here. So many things, I just have to put them all around the place on the floor. So I have another one I've been planning on doing for a while with EFA, and it's called Electrona. When I saw it, I fell in love with it. It, uh, I think it's made with bamboo. I think it's made with their bamboo. I was not partial to the colors, and I wanted to use something I had here in the house. I wanted to use my something from my collection. And I thought it had to be made with two strands because if you look closely at that picture, it starts with one color and then it puts two colors together and then it goes on with the next color. And that's how the fade is made. So it's something that's got to be made two-stranded. And I thought, well, if I use most of my fingering weight, it will probably be a little heavier than I would like. So I have a fair number, not a fair number, I have several skeins of alpaca silk lace that I tend not to work with simply because it's a little finer than I like. So I thought the one time I used it, I used a double strand. So I thought, well, this is the perfect way to use my alpaca silk lace. So very quickly, I'm just going to show you this. I have these colors. I may have ordered one of them to fill this out. There's, it takes five colors. And I am going to use these five colors and make that shawl. And like I said, these are alpaca silk lace and I'll be able to use them double stranded and create that fade. And finally, not finally, I have several several others. But the next um, EFA one I want to show you will lead us into uh, an acquisition. I said I had an acquisition to show you. And I want to make this one called Awakening. And of all of the ones I'm showing you, this will likely be the first one I make after the ones that I'm committed to get made, like the Summer Cow. So it is called Awakening. Here is the picture, and it uses bamboo alpaca. And I had a couple of skeins of bamboo alpaca, but when I saw that pattern, I said, well, I got to get some of that yarn and make it. Of course, I got to make it in my colors, not the colors they were showing. So I ordered some bamboo alpaca, and I'll show you one to get started and tell you about it. Then I'll show you the colors I have. Um, and I already had, so maybe I'll start with them. I already had these two colors. Did I have that pink? Maybe. Now, bamboo alpaca. Now, I had ordered these to try them, and when I try something, I usually order neutral things that will go with something else. Bamboo alpaca is fingering weight, and <clears throat> a few people out there I know would love this because of the bamboo. This is also a good yarn for those that have uh, wool allergies or sensitivities to wool, 
this would be a good yarn for you if you want something fingering and hand dyed. <clears throat> so it is 80% viscose bamboo and 20% alpaca. Alpaca is, is supposedly a hypoallergenic yarn. So that's what it's made up of. It has 351 meters and 384 yards. Now, you can see a bit of sheen on it. Bamboo typically has a sheen. And it is quite soft. It's a silky feeling. Bamboo often feels silky. And alpaca is a very soft yarn as well. So this is quite soft. I've never worked with it. I can't tell you much about it at this point, but I am going to make that shawl I just showed you. It looks like a fairly straightforward pattern, and I believe I looked at it, and it has... A, in fact, I think this is one of the few patterns that it has um, a chart with it, and it repeats. It's repetitive. And that's my kind of shawl. So here are the colors I ordered. I'm only going to use uh, one, two, three, I believe four colors are needed. I got this blue. I have two of those. I got this purple. I got this other blue. I got this, uh, I'm going to call it aqua. It's almost a mint green. It's called Panoramic Peace. I'll tell you the names of all of them in a minute. And like I could do it in those four colors. I think that would look nice. Or I could swap one of them out and use this pink. Supposing I used pink instead of the second blue. So that's the way it would look with, with only one blue. This is the way it would look with the two blues. Hmm. And I also ordered this color only because you can't be sure on the website. I ordered this color. Obviously, it doesn't really fit with them. Some people would use it. I wouldn't. Now, this one is called Summer in Adraga. This mint green or aqua is called Panoramic Peace. I like that color. The pink, and it's actually a rosy kind of pink, is called Sandals. She gives some names that have nothing to do with the color. <laughs> This light blue is called Bay Beach. That might be close. This mauve or lilac color is called Cocoa Beach. I'm not too sure how that works. And finally, this darker blue. Now this one does work. Calm Day at Sea. Calm Day at Sea. So, I'd be interested to hear what your choice would be. Two blues with the aqua and uh, purple, lilac, or one blue, pink, aqua, and lilac. I think I know which way I want to go. But these are the yarns, and it feels, it really does feel nice. And I can tell before I even get going it's going to have marvelous drape. The skein itself has great drape. So using this is going to be wonderful. And I'm looking forward to working with this. And like I said, I have more that I can do other things with. So that is a future project that is going to be sooner than later. And the last project I want to talk about is... What am I going to do with this? 
what am I going to do with my minis? And I have two possible choices. Uh, I thought I had decided on a pattern called On the Bias, On the Bias Suzette Shawl. I thought it was kind of neat that we just did a Suzette tutorial. Here is a picture of what it looks like. It's a Brianna K pattern. I'm sure a number of you are familiar with her. She does a lot of YouTube tutorials, as I recall. So I thought, well, I could just do that with this gradient. Then I got thinking, hmm, maybe I'd rather do something that had more of a gradient in the pattern. So the other possibility is to do a shawl very much like the one I just finished for um, July's for July's Mal, the one that had the blues and greens in it. If I can find my picture, I'll post it up there. That was a different pattern. I explained how it worked and I found another one that looks just like it. I think it uses the same pattern, but I want to try it out. And it's called Zenner Coit, Q-U-O-I-T. And it, I really like it for this idea, but I also like that there's a second picture of that same pattern done with probably, I would probably do it with a gradient cake. So I can't decide whether I want to do this or the gradient cake for that pattern. Do I want to do this for what I just showed you or for the Suzette one? By the time I get to this, I could change my mind again several times. Who knows? But anyway, those are some projects I want to be working on in the next few months. So I'd be curious mostly to hear uh, about your thoughts on what to do with this shawl. I think this might be my best choice for different colors. Although I noticed they used two similar colors in their uh, version of it. And the other thing I want to hear from you about is what to do with my summer cow and all of those squares. Now, I just reminded myself that there are some of you that are fairly new to the channel and may be wondering about all those squares and the summer cow. So I want to go over the information about that cow one more time. For those that are fairly new, I did six stitch tutorials for those six squares. And if you start with last week, that was tutorial number six. I started the last week of June with tutorial number one went all through July. Each week I did another tutorial. You will find the tutorials at the end of the video and there are two timestamps, one in the comments and one in the description box to take you to the stitch tutorials. So after those six stitch tutorials, whoops, <laughs> After those six stitch tutorials, you were to choose at least four, minimum four, no less than four. You can use all six. I'm using all six. And you are to make something. And again, I'll flash a couple of pictures while I'm going over these instructions. You can use any yarn, weight, or color. You can do it one color. You can do it multiple colors. You can make any item you want, and I've been showing you a few examples of things that you can make. You must use a minimum of four of the stitches, any of the four you like, in that project. 
And finally, you have to email me the picture. My email is in the description box below, but it's judyscreations21 at gmail.com. It's in the description box of every one of my videos. You must email me the picture of your finished product by September the 8th. And September the 8th is a Sunday. That And I, again, will make up a slideshow, but I have to have time to make up the slideshow as well as the regular video for the week for that Thursday. So that Thursday, you will see what everybody made. In the email, you must give me your name. I'd love to have your location in just a state or province or country if you are outside of North America. I'd love to have your location. And I would like you to indicate which of the stitches you used. So just the list of the stitches you used. I suspect a lot of these are going to be people's own creations, but if you did use a pattern to help you, I'm not too sure how you would use a pattern, but I guess you might have used a pattern for inspiration. I, I would like to know the pattern name and designer as well. But most cases, there probably won't be. You're going to be like me. You're going to be putting it together in a scarf. Or I know uh, somebody that's putting them all together in a blanket. Well, you just made the, the squares using my tutorials, and then you put them together. And in a lot of cases, I'm sure that's what you're doing. But I would like to know the four stitches you used, who you are, and where you're from. And September the 8th is the deadline. Now you have right through the night, because in the morning the next day is when I start making my list of who sent in and making the slide show. And unfortunately, somebody didn't make a deadline last time and I had already made the video and if it comes in late I can't do anything about it so I'd uh, appreciate getting I hope there are quite a few of you several have told me you are working on something um, it'll be interesting to see how many of you are doing it I know some of you don't have the time and you like to do the monthly mail so that's fine if you choose that instead but it'll be interesting to see what you do with all these stitches. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I always look forward to seeing what you have to send in to me based on the monthly inspiration. So that's everything. Uh, I have no more. Oh, I do have some acquisitions coming. I just remembered, though, that I do the monthly mystery. It's called a mystery skein. Um, from Color of My Fiber every month, and I haven't ordered it yet this month, so I must do that as soon as I finish here. And I signed up again for Adam's Minis of the month, and I'm going to do it, I think, until the end of the year. So I have more things to tell you about coming this fall, uh, which I'll save for next week. And by next week, I'll have some inspiration from some of you, hopefully, in what I'm going to do to do my summer cow. And um, I look forward to seeing you all back here again next week. And until then, happy hooking. <laughs>